Oh, yes, friends. Yes! Yes! Phew! Dad, what's that croc, eh? That croc's coming in. Barramundi Crocodiles Waterfall is what the Great Adventure's all about. Yeah, friends. Yeah. Get Salty Dingo has got us to yet another incredible spot. Check this out, man. Woo -hoo -hoo! This is incredible. This is so cool to be able to share this with probably the three most important people in my life, mum, dad, and Fran. Sorry, as now I'm gonna get the get the drone up and catch it from the air. just pulled up in this natural amphitheater where we're gonna have a bite to eat for lunch and then continue exploring after lunch. Oh! Oh, Barra right under the waterfall there. All right, how amazing is this? We've explored all the way to the upper reaches of this river where you literally go no further and there's barramundi um i lost one before while the camera is off it jumped out of the water and spat the hooks and fran has been playing with one there Come on, yeah. ah! get it back down there he'll have another go <laughs> drop it on his head he's just there isn't he there's a big barra just under there that fran's dropped the lure right on its nose that boofed it a couple of times Let's have a quick swim and then get going before the tide drops too much. That's what it's all about. Found a waterfall. Another incredible spot here. Like every turn we take on this river, it opens up to another spot like this where there's just these incredible drop offs, little waterfalls, and, and crocodiles, and just all sorts of wild stuff. This has just been such an enjoyable day. All right, we've just spotted a crocodile, and he doesn't seem too shy. So we're gonna turn the boat off here, get the drone up, and see if we can get a bit of cool footage of him. Dad, 
Dad has hooked a massive barra and we've lost so many today. So this hopefully is the fish we're after. Jeez, how was its first jump? It fully cleared the water, didn't it? Oh, I can see Silver here. He's coming up pretty, pretty well now. Woo-hoo-hoo! Oh, it's a beauty. A photo, eh? Oh, jeez, it's not cooked that well, Dad. Far out. What do we do? Just on his lip. I'll, I'll try lip him. You want to try lip him or? No, just tire him out. Just tire him out. Oh, it just, it just oh. moves. It's a beauty. We don't want to... We've got her. Oh, don't say that. It's just hooked on the lip. All right, you want me to grab his lip, Dad? Yep, try. Yes, Dad! Woohoo! Yes! Well done, Dad. Incredible fish. Where she goes? There she goes. He's right. Well done, Dad. I knew we'd get one. <laughs> well done. Yeah, we just need a smaller one. Oh, that was incredible. So in all that commotion, a big cross come and popped up just next to the boat again. It's just on the edge there, eh? Yeah. Okay. He's bigger than the last one, I reckon. Yeah. There's a bit going on here. There's barra, there's crocodiles. Waterfalls, welcome to the Kimberley. Oh, oh yes, friends. Yes! That's right, yes. boys. Woohoo! Dad, what's that croc, eh? That croc's oh, coming straight. That, that croc's coming in. He's coming in hot. Yeah, friends, get the. No! Get the no! All right, just watch. Just hold on, hold on. Hold on. This croc is a meter away from the boat. Mate, we want that barra just as much as you do. Holy... I'm shaking. <laughs> yeah, he was too big and heavy, wasn't he? There's nothing else we could have done there. Like, this bloke would have eaten that barra. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what the Great Adventure is all about. Barramundi, crocodiles, waterfall, this stuff is wild. All right, we've just pulled in on the riverbank here. We're going for a bit of an adventure. We've heard that there's some old rock art, like really ancient old rock art, and it's a bit of a, a mystery that's still unsolved, the, the yarn behind this rock art. So we're gonna go see if we can find any of that. And there's also, this is up above that waterfall we are at yesterday. So there's all these different swimming pools I saw on the drone. So we're gonna go have a swim, have a bit of a walk and see what we can find. And of course you guys are coming along for the adventure. Nice hat. Oh, and my favorite hat got burnt. So now I'm gonna end up with a sun bleached scalp. But right, it's all I've got. <laughs> Alright, so we've made it up to the top of those falls that we saw yesterday and now we're going in search of one of the, the true mysteries of Australia that's still left unsolved. So we're going to start trekking upstream here and see if we can find what we're looking for. I think we should come up here, guys. Oh, 
crank on a look. So my interpretation of this, that's a Tasmanian tiger, now extinct. And this is some traditional Aboriginal rock art. I wonder if they used to leave anything in these little letterbox. The Aboriginal people of Australia have lived here and painted the walls of caves for over 60,000 years, making them one of the oldest civilizations known on Earth. But today we're looking for a certain style of ancient cave painting that opens up one of the world's true mysteries. Oh, there's some good overhangs here. Man, this would have been such a basic spot back in the day. The people really relying on this fresh water for drinking and then all the, all the fish and turtles and, and bush tucker that comes with it. Well, that looks like a good spot there. What have you found? I'm gonna to have to go up and have a look up there. There's a definite Bradshaw painting. Oh. This is probably the clearest Bradshaw here. Look at some of the decorative headwear they've got on. The head. Yeah, and look at the tassels and the, the get up there wearing. So these Bradshaw paintings are what we've been looking for today. Since I first read about these, they've absolutely blown my mind. This style of painting has really opened up a can of worms on the whole history of Australia and it's still a mystery that today is unsolved. So they go by the name Bradshaw paintings because a bloke by the name of Bradshaw was the first European fellow that come and, and seen them. Um, so they took on his name. But the whole mystique mystery about them is that as you can see quite clearly they are totally different to any indigenous Australian um, rock art that I've seen. And the yarn behind these cave paintings uh, has been highlighted by a bloke by the name of Les Hiddens, better known as the Bush Tucker Man, an Australian legend. He highlighted that the Australian Indigenous people disown this type of art. They, they reckon it's rubbish drawings. Times like we've seen today actually painted over the top of them. So it just raises the question, if they didn't paint them, then who did? They remind me of like Africa, Madagascar, that kind of a theme. You know, the, the characters are, are wearing the, the big headdresses and they've got the jewelry and, and similar to um, art that I've seen, you know, in modern day out of these types of places. And still today, the theory that I reckon is the most feasible, um, the key to it lies in one of the trees of the area here that is symbolic to this Kimberley region. Uh, I'm gonna find that tree and share with you that yarn. I reckon this one complex with the two. Yeah. And then the, the horns and the hat here. They show a progressive decline in artistic technique and ability. This provides an interesting mystery yet to be solved and raises many questions. Are the first classic realistic images the result of an early migration of a different culture? All right, yes, this is the one we've been looking for. This tree here behind me is the Boab tree. And there's a link between this tree, which is iconic to the Kimberley area and those Bradshaw paintings we were just looking at. The link between this tree 
and those Bradshaw paintings it comes in this nut, the Boab, the Boab fruit or the Boab nut. So this tree is only found in a couple of places in the world, um, one being this area of the Kimberley and Africa. And if you look on a map where you find the Bradshaw paintings, these guys are here as well. There's a direct link between the Boab tree. The theory is long before Captain Cook set sail out for Australia, um, you know, thousands of years prior to that, there was other people sailing around the world doing their best. And no doubt they would have been going into Madagascar and um, picking up crew and at the time they were slaves there and then setting sail. And this fruit would have been a vital staple. As you can see that hard nut on the outside, that would survive for, it survives for months and months and months and then you can eat the, eat the stuff inside. So they would have loaded up their boat with this Boab nut. And then the theory is one of these many vessels has become shipwrecked on a certain part of the Kimberley coast. They've come ashore with their Boab nuts and you know, ended up getting along pretty well um, in Australia here. And that's where you see the Bradshaw paintings. And I think our iconic Kimberley Boab tree came with those blokes all those years ago. But that's not it. This is where it gets really interesting. So the Dreamtime story of the Aboriginal people here in Australia is that these Boab trees, back in the day, they were the most beautiful, staunch, biggest trees in all the land but they were a bit big headed, they were arrogant. The spirit of mother nature pulled and uprooted these trees, tipped them upside down, jammed his big head into the ground. And what we see up here is just what was the root system. Now, the funny thing is back in Madagascar, their people have got the exact same yarn. It's one hell of a coincidence. Holy moly. You guys have found the jackpot over here. So you found a safe little spa, Fran? Yeah. So where are we going to swim in this one? Yeah. That's Sounds good. <laughs> Little croc has been sunning himself up here. He's just come off and I spooked him. He's gone into the water there. He was probably just over a meter long, that one. So that one personally couldn't couldn't harm me. But if he gets here, you know, there's all the chance that a big, a big one can get here. So we do have to tread very lightly here and only swim in those, something else scampering here. Only swim in those little rock pools where we can see the bottom. Fran, I just saw a croc there. Just a little one, like only a meter, but he come off there. To the right of you. And then I, sp I spooked him and he slid off and just jumped into this pool here. This one. Yeah. We've got maybe 10 minutes of fishing left until we've got to raise the sun home and back up our creek camp. So the pressure's on. Take it steady. Oh yes! Woo! Take it, he's got a bit of jumping to do yet. Great cast. Oh, it smells very well. All right, what do you want, what do you want to happen here? I'll let him run a little bit. Oh, no, 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 no,
<laughs> There's that well crispy, done. That crispy skin barra. So why was there so much pressure to catch a barra today? Because it's Jack's birthday <laughs> and all he wished for was crispy skin barra. Well done. Crispy skin barra. <laughs> well, I couldn't catch one so thanks for, thanks for sorting us out. Happy birthday. What is it on the last guy? I might have got myself a birthday barra Monday. Woohoo! So what are you cooking for him? Crispy skin barra and off week chips if I don't get there. This is the crispy skin barra she's done up. Far better than my last attempt that made it on YouTube. And we've got some chips going as well. Thanks for dinner, friend. You're welcome, happy birthday. What a way to wake up. Yes, 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 yes. Them. Oh, no, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, how did you see that? Oh, yeah. Don't lose it. That's dinner. Bye, right, Fran. We got Barra for dinner. Sounds good. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, 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 oh. oh strong for a little fish. Yes! Beautiful Barramundi. Very much fun. Alright, just finishing up a day here and we had a fair bit of luck fishing. So we got a couple of Barramundi as you guys would have seen. Uh, we ate as much as we could and then now Fran has been all day pickling. Yeah, all day she's been working on this. So that's gonna last without ice. We don't have any ice with us. So that's gonna last for, I think, how long do you reckon it'll last for, friend? Forever. Forever? All right. Talk us through what you've done today. So? <laughs> yeah? I bought a filler of fish. Yeah. Which is a filler of baramand in this case. And then let it dry in the pot in the sun, in the table cloth all day. And now, I'm just gonna put it in the jar of coconut oil. Yeah. Oh yeah, if it goes in the jar. Okay, let's... Let's just explain what's happening here because I've got no idea. <laughs> Get it hot. Mm. 
and then close it. Then when it cools down, it seals it. Yes, so it creates a vacuum. Yeah. See? Yeah. Follow me for more recipes. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll last us for the rest of the trip when we can't catch any fish. We've got a tin or a jar of pickled barramundi. Cool. <laughs> bit of sad news that mum and dad left last night it was all all went to plan and they're all good and everything their plan was just to do half of the trip with us so a week and uh, it's just Fran and I for the rest of the trip it was so so good to spend a bit of time with them and dad's still sleeping on the sand by the fire and mum's been sleeping on a hammock between the trees so uh, Fran and I thought we were you know roughing it on this swag here but this thing's like the penthouse compared to compared to what they were doing. But now we're gonna pack up camp this morning and keep exploring. We're gonna to go to a new, new place and hopefully it's something similar to this. Good start. Yeah. Oh. We're off in search of a missing crab pot. <laughs> we um, put a little dilly pot in and then half hour later something had taken it away. So we've seen what it was. Oh. All right, we've found our missing float and it's a long way from where we put it down. Eh? It's probably 200 meters up this creek. And this is it here floating. Something big has dragged it up here. Not too bad. It might still be usable. It is still usable. All right, note to self, let's out of two crab pots we've tried crabbing up here, both have been taken by a croc in like half an hour since we put them in. So we might put this one away for a while. First impressions, Fran. Just checking for crocs at the moment. Checking for crocs at the moment. There's a white sandy yeah, beach up there. A... Crocodile? Yeah, up there, back. This is one of the most exciting parts, pulling in on a stretch of coastline where we just know nothing about and trying to find a camp spot. So. There's a, a white sandy beach here, but the thing about the tides, they'll come up, you know, five or six meters difference in height from the high tide to the low tide, which is very challenging to, um, to anchor a boat and find a good campsite. But yeah, fingers crossed we can find one here. There's a little croc, probably won't be able to see it hitting straight into the sun, but there's a croc on the bank just there. We're looking at setting up camp just up here somewhere.
Oh, it's a bit sinky. Wait, do you reckon here or right down the end? On that over there. Oh, rolling away. Safe enough from the crocodiles. All right, so we've found this spot, which we're going to call home for the night. We've just set up camp. Um, I'll do a little walk around with you. This is the swag. Here we have the rug with a um, bit of cooking gear, a bit of camera gear, fire pit where our fire's going to go. And that's the view. Really, really cool. And across the other side of the river here, on the way in, there's like all these kind of cool overhanging caves, similar to where we found those Bradshaw rock art paintings the other day. So uh, I think that's going to be tomorrow's mission is we're going to go for a bit of explore um, you know, up the river and see what we can find. Good cast. Of wow! <laughs> yeah, we found them. <laughs> Just gonna throw a hand line off the beach here and see if we can um, catch something for dinner on sunset. Is it still on? Yeah, yeah, he's on. Either a shovel nose or a croc. Oh. Or a croc? Oh, you seeing a croc? Nah. Oh, he's just there. But there's a barra in here to keep pulling the bait, so we're going to try and catch him. Yeah. Oh, I can't see anything on the GoPro. It's just you running around. <laughs> oh, it's a big one. <laughs> Far out. Big fish, friend. Man, it's fast. Hey, I don't know what it is. We just got to be careful of crocs here, right? Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, it's a sawfish. Oh, what? oh my God, friend, it's a big sawfish. What? See this? <gasps> oh, oh, it's a big sawfish. I told you. I knew it was. No, he's just spat the hook. He's oh. just spat the hook. Man. That was really cool. That's the first one I've ever seen in my life, even though it was just its saw come out. That's, we saw it. We Give saw it. the sawfish. Mm -hmm. 